Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at a ultra small modular PC from our good friends over at acepcs.com. This is actually something pretty stunning. If you're looking for a very, very basic, lightweight, portable PC which uses very, very little power, this could be right up your street. So you can see the PC there. Yes, it's got some RGB on it. That is optional. You can discount it if you want to. But believe it or not, that is the PC. It's absolutely tiny. It measures in at 125 mil by 125 mil, so deep by width. When it comes to the height, this is modular. So it can either be 55 millimeters in height or 35 millimeters in height. And I'll show you why that is a little bit later in the video. We're gonna go through today, do a quick unboxing, show you exactly what you get. I have been using this today, doing some testing and uh, over the last few days, done a couple of upgrades to it as well, yes. Even though it's absolutely tiny and it is a small form factor PC, you can actually perform some upgrades on it, believe it or not, which we'll uh, be talking about. And also we have done a separate video, so if you want to see how that works, you can check it out. We'll link it in the video description. So before we get into the unboxing process and what is actually included, let's talk about the specifications of this tiny little PC. So this is running with the Intel N95 processor, which has four cores and four threads. Turbo boosts up to 3.4 gigahertz, and in normal Windows operation, you should see it kind of in around the 2.6 to 3.2 gigahertz, depending on what you're doing. All core boost loads will come down a little bit to around about 2.6, 2.7, but it's going to depend on the load, heat, etc., etc. And when it comes to heat, very, very low TDP processor, 15 watts TDP. And from when I've been using it, I've only managed to get it to take somewhere in the region about 11 and a half watts. So clearly there is a little bit of room for tweaking should you know what you're doing in the BIOS, of which you can access and there are actually a ton of features in the BIOS which you can take a look at, which you're probably seeing on the screen right now. So if you have a clue what you're doing, you're more than welcome to tweak these settings to your exact liking. You can also as well change the memory frequency. It does come as standard with eight gigabytes of RAM included, which you're probably seeing on the screen right now. This is DDR4-2666. I've actually chosen to upgrade this particular model from the eight gigs that it comes with to a 16 gig model. You can pick these up really, really cheaply, around about 25 pounds here in the UK for a RAM upgrade, should you wish to. Although realistically, you don't actually need to. Just with Windows installed, and it is a very basic Windows 11 installation on here, Windows 11 Pro, I should add. And even with all that running and with Cinebench in the background, it's only using about 4.4 gigabytes of RAM. So you've got a little bit of room there for opening up Chrome, Edge, doing some word processing or just answering emails, that kind of thing. Other features of this, so it's got Wi-Fi 5 built in, also Bluetooth 4.0. You also have a bunch of USB 2 and USB 3 headers, two HDMI outputs, both supporting 4K 60 Hertz, and you do have wired ethernet as well, should you need it. There's also a combination microphone headset jack, which you can plug in if you want to, either speakers or a headset mic combo if you want to play some games online, although it's probably not designed for that sort of thing. It does include Intel onboard graphics in the form of the Intel UHD graphics chipset. This runs at somewhere around about 1.2 gigahertz. It's not gonna set the world on fire, but for basic productivity tasks, watching YouTube videos, and some very, very lightweight gaming, it'll be absolutely fine. Anyway, that's the specifications out of the way. Let's take a look and see what we get. So obviously you get a box, mini PC. It kind of does what it says on the tin. You get an included HDMI cable for connecting up to a monitor. There is also a bracket as well, which you can mount to the back of the unit. And this actually is VESA 100 or VESA 75. So you can actually attach this PC to the back of your monitor. So if you want an ultra clean looking desktop, you can attach this to the back of your monitor completely out of sight. And potentially then you don't see the uh, addressable RGB either. You get the screws for attaching all that and also you get a mini PC kind of user manual. It is rather basic and just essentially tells you where to plug things, but don't worry, because we're gonna show you where to plug things right away. So on the top, you've got the Ace PC logo on there, which is embossed into it. On the front, absolutely nothing at all. And on this side, nothing at all. Going back to the front, then on the side, you have got your power on, Next up, there is a pair of USB 3.0 ports, type A, and also a USB 2 port, also type A. This is gonna be great for plugging in things like your uh, wireless mouse receiver, that sort of thing, should you wish to, or any devices you choose to. On the back, we've got a barrel jack for the input. The input on this is a 12 volt, 2.5 amp connector, which um, you get included. 
depending on which region you're buying, you'll get the appropriate one for your country. It's a very small little wall unit, and I think that gives off up to about 30 watts. So there's a little bit of headroom there should you want to do some tweaking or uh, connect up various devices to this, which will then draw power through the system. You've also got two HDMI outputs, which is always a nice thing to see. So if you are just connecting up maybe a media center PC, then that's great. Just straight in through your HDMI, straight into your big screen TV. Or if you're using this for some form of productivity and you've got multiple windows open, you can connect up two monitors up to 4K60 each. Moving across, we've got the Gigabit Ethernet, which also supports 10100. Next up, there is the combo mic and headset jack. And there also is a Kensington lock. So if you want to secure this to a desk somewhere, you certainly can do. You'll notice around the side there where the address port RGB is, that is also ventilation. So allowing lots of air to come through. And then when we take a look at the bottom of the device, this is where it actually gets interesting and where I mentioned earlier, this is a modular design. This is what I mean. So this section here is your SSD upgrade section. So you can undo these two screws here, remove this flap, and you can install a two and a half inch SSD or hard disk drive, should you want to, to expand the storage of the unit, which is absolutely excellent. If for some reason you maybe don't want to use that or you I've got this set up at home and you want to leave that at home because it's a mechanical drive and you don't want it bouncing around. All you can do is slide those two across and this section is removable and there is a USB type C connection which connects in there. And then you've still got your mini PC with the operating system inside, but maybe you've got your films and other stuff on here which you can return to when you get home. I think this is absolutely excellent and extremely easy to upgrade. Talking of upgrading, this thing is super easy to upgrade as well. So all you need to do on the bottom here is remove the four rubber feet there and take out the four screws. And then this top section is removable. If you don't like the addressable RGB lighting on here, you can disable it by purely just disconnecting it. There's a single connection going to the motherboard. So if that isn't something which uh, floats your boat, then you can disconnect that should you want to. Also inside here, you've got full access to things like the CPU cooler of which this is extremely quiet. It only kicks in when it gets over 60 degrees Celsius on the CPU, and that is a rarity anyway. Even in Cinebench loads, it only went up to about 70, and that was after a while where it just gradually built up some heat. Normal use case scenario is gonna be somewhere in the 40s to 50s and basically completely silent. And even with the fan running, again, against the rest of the things in the room, you'll barely know it's actually on. So also inside, you've got access to the NVMe drive, which is removable. Now they do include a 512 gigabyte model as standard from the factory, which is a M.2 SSD. You can use M.2 NVMe PCI Express drives also, PCI Express Gen 3 by 4. You can swap those out. So whatever drive you want to put in there, you can do. Anything up to around about two to four terabytes should be absolutely fine. Also, if you want to upgrade the RAM, this did worry me because actually on the website, which appears to be a either miscommunication or whatever, it says on the website about the RAM being eight gigabytes of RAM and saying that it's soldered to the board. Now this is incorrect and the RAM is removable. This system, the N95, only supports single channel RAM. So there is a single RAM slot. It comes occupied with an eight gig stick included. But again, if you want to upgrade it to a 16 or a 32, you certainly can do. And it is actually quite a cheap thing to do should you wish to upgrade. But like I said again earlier, you don't really need to because it only runs in a single channel. You're not really getting any more performance, but you are getting just a little bit more breathing room if you're having multiple Chrome tabs open and that kind of thing. Realistically, the difference between this being on eight gigs and 16 gigs is basically nothing unless you start in lots and lots of programs, which really this processor is probably not best suited for. So going back to what this processor is suited for, and essentially it's gonna be for your kind of really basic computer tasks. So answering emails, maybe the old Word document, that sort of thing. I've actually installed OpenOffice on here and that runs absolutely fine, no issues whatsoever. Also for web scrolling, just going down, checking out your news feed, all that kind of stuff. Very, very smooth, very, very slick. It does work much better in 1080p. So if you are planning on running this on 4K monitor, you will certainly notice a slight performance hit because it just takes more power to generate that much information on a screen. So 1080p is where I would say this is happiest at, but it certainly can do 4K as well. The actual footage when you're watching on YouTube is excellent. And actually, if you look at the stats for nerds in the corner there, you'll see that the only time we dropped any frames is where I switched from being theater mode to full screen mode, 
which is quite often the case for a lot of systems. If you do that, there's that brief millisecond where it drops a couple of frames and it carries on smoothly and it plays footage back very nicely. Strangely, it also plays games quite nicely as well. So we had a couple of games on this. So we're using the Asphalt Airborne 8, gave that a go and it actually runs quite smoothly. I was quite impressed. This is a basic Windows Store game and doesn't take a great deal to run it anyway, but it was a very enjoyable task. Didn't seem to have any obvious slowdowns or any skip frames. Played very nicely. So again, for lightweight gaming, this is going to be absolutely fine. Another very similar type of game. So this is Beach Buggy Racing. Similar sort of deal, a Windows Store game again, but it runs very nicely. So if you're having this, maybe for some younger children who just want to play those really basic games, it's going to be absolutely fine. Now, another thing which this is really good for, which I haven't tested myself, is emulation. So if you're planning on using some sort of emulation, this is going to be fine for some of the older stuff like PS1, Dreamcast, that kind of thing, and main ROMs, that sort of thing. But if you're looking for the more modern stuff, then this may struggle a little bit. Your mileage may vary depending how you tweak your settings, but obviously do temper your expectations. It is only an N95 processor. It is slightly better than N5105, which came before it, but it still can struggle in some of those emulation tasks. So don't expect it to be running the latest and greatest PS3 titles at high frame rates. So something we haven't mentioned yet is the price of this thing. So at the moment, this is in the same position as a lot of these type of mini PCs on the market. Whereas they have a kind of a estimated retail price, which is what it's normally shipped as, but there's always some kind of deal or offer on. And this is no different. Between the 23rd and the 28th of November, 2023, this is gonna be on offer at the website with the links below. And you should possibly get anywhere up to 100 pounds off, which is absolutely insane. Now there is one of those spin to win wheels. So your mileage may vary drastically, I've done this a couple of times, gone and used a few different emails and I've done the spin to win and pretty much every single time I've done it, I've got at least £40 off. So that's going to bring down the price from 167 or whatever it is to 130 ish You do get free shipping and also something I should mention, you do also get a 24 month warranty on this, which is uh, pretty decent. So I think for 100, well, under £130, let's say, I think this offers fantastic value for money. If you just need another PC for the home, for kids to do their homework, to log on to the websites for schools, etc., that sort of thing, it's going to be absolutely great. Or if you're just someone who likes watching media, you don't want to have your main PC on because it's got a 3080 graphics card and it's drawing hundreds of watts of power just to watch a darn video, you can put this behind your TV. It's only going to draw about 10 to 15 watts or so and it's going to be uh, very quiet whilst doing it. So this is potentially one of those kind of add-on PCs for the house, which you may find very, very useful in an emergency or just for watching movies or potentially, like I said, a little bit of emulation. Anyway, I've whittled on for way too long. Don't forget all the links for this will be in the video description below. Massive shout out and thanks to Ace PC for sending this over to us for review. Hopefully they'll be sending some more in the future, maybe some slightly higher powered ones. You never know, we might even have a dedicated gaming PC that comes in this kind of form factor soon. Who knows? Anyway, that's going to wrap this one up. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then maybe hit the subscribe button and the channel notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.